Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Plasma 5 continues its release cycle and we are days from the release of Plasma 5.21, which is a pretty big one if we compare it to the ones that came before. On the menu, we have a bit of a redesign, a new application menu, many, many Wayland improvements and a whole new system monitor. Let's take a look right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year, by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Oh, and before I forget, in addition to having great written documentation, Linode also just started their own YouTube channel where you can check out video tutorials and guides, information on Linux cloud computing, and guest appearances from various experts. Check them out at youtube.com slash Linode. Okay, so the desktop is what received the most attention this time around. It's good to see KDE focusing on the user experience of the actual desktop instead of refining the settings, even though that work was necessary and welcome. To begin with, we have a new look for title bars and windows. Where before the title bar was dark and separate from the contents of the window, now it blends smoothly with the menu bar and the toolbar in a grey solid background. It looks more modern, in my opinion, than the previous defaults and it reminds me of the Oxygen theme, which is my favorite since the KDE 4 days. It also makes windows feel less heavy, although it makes it harder to notice when a window isn't focused. In the end, I like the change, but people who don't can always install another window decoration directly from the settings. Now, for users who like having their windows light themed, but prefer their panels and widgets a bit darker, KDE ships the Breeze Twilight theme by default, which keeps the default light color in the application windows, but puts all plasmoids into the Breeze Dark theme. You could already do that manually if you wanted, but now it's a one-click setting, so that's easier and more accessible. The other more important change here is the new application menu. KDE has been using Kickoff since a long, long time, and it was a great menu, well segmented, flexible and fast. Now it's replaced with a new iteration, split only in two parts, applications and places. The applications panel is now divided in two, one is a category list on the left, and the other is the list of the actual apps in that category on the right. It's pretty usable when using a mouse, although I'm not sure I like how the applications in a category are displayed, with an alphabetical sorting order materialized with the letters. You can change the category selected simply by hovering over it, but there seems to be a slight delay before the apps actually display, which makes the new menu feel a bit sluggish sometimes. Of course you can still search by just pressing the super key and typing immediately. This new menu also offers quick system actions like sleep, restart, shutdown or log off right from the bottom. It's not super configurable, you can only change the icon, the shortcut, elect to display favorites in a grid or a list, and change the main system actions to be session actions like locking the screen, logging out and switching the user. There are also a bunch of search plugins that you can enable or disable if you want to filter out some stuff when you search using the menu. There is no way to display the apps from a category in a grid like the favorites are, which is unfortunate, but since it's KDE I'm pretty sure it's gonna be added as an option at some point. All in all, the new look and feel is a small change, but a welcome one. I still feel that KDE's application style with the big buttons, with their blue outline and their 3D effect are now dated, and I'd welcome an update to how they look as well. But Plasma isn't ugly by any means, and since it's super easy to change how it looks and feels, it's not a big issue. Now on the Plasmoid side of things, there is also a new media applet that shows tabs for every audio source that you have, so you can control all your audio playback through one single applet, without having one for each app you usually interact with. And finally, the sound applet now displays the main microphone's volume, 
which makes it a lot easier to tune it up or down when you're in one of those video conferences that we have all been doing lately. Now let's move on to the applications. The Core Plasma apps haven't changed much here, but there is a whole new arrival, a new system monitor. This won't revolutionize the way you use your computer at all, but it's still a nice tool to have when you need it. The old k guard tool is out, and the new system monitor is in, then, with a modernized interface. It's actually based on the more recent Plasmoids for system monitoring, which means it looks good and is very flexible. By default, you get an overview page with the main system info, RAM consumption, disk usage and CPU load, as well as the network activity and some system info. You then have an applications page listing all open apps and a processes page listing all processes so you can kill them quickly if they ever become unresponsive. There's also a history page to monitor your system's load in terms of memory, CPU and network. On my computer it didn't really display the graphs but it's probably because, well, KDE Plasma 5.21 hasn't been released officially yet, so yeah, there still might be bugs. Now, each of these pages can be customized and you can even create new ones so people who really need a powerful tool to monitor how their devices run can do so. It was already possible using the more recent Plasmoids, but now it's all combined into a single application. The settings still see some changes in this release as the effort to revamp and make these look more coherent continues. First, there is a new firewall configuration page to configure UFW or Firewall D. It's a simple page, but efficient, and it lets you quickly create rules if you need them. A few other pages have also been revamped and made to look more in line with the rest of the settings, including the accessibility page with the list of options and a side panel to configure them, the desktop session options and the login manager which now looks more like the other appearance settings with a list of available themes. Smaller changes include the ability to enable unattended upgrades in Discover if you need your computer to update in the background and the ability to pin KRunner so it won't go away even if you click out of it. Now, the last main part of the efforts for Plasma 5.21 is Wayland. 5.20 had already done a lot of the groundwork here, but 5.21 is probably the release that makes KDE shine on it. As a matter of fact, this whole video has been recorded on the Wayland session of KDE 5.21 using KDE Neon Unstable. First of the changes is the latency. Compositing has been improved a lot and there should now be a lot less latency between an action and its result on the screen. This can come at the expense of smoothness of animation, so you even get to change the balance that you want to reach right in the compositor settings, with a few options ranging from the lowest latency, with the possibility of drop frames, to super smoothness, which will increase the delay between your actions and its results, but will look super slick. At least, that's in theory, because I couldn't really tell the difference between the two on my desktop. I'd expect devices with weaker GPUs to feel more responsive in low latency mode. KDE also added the ability to use mixed refresh rates display configurations, so you can now use your main display at 100 or 144Hz, and a secondary one at 60Hz without issues. KRunner is also now able to accurately list all open applications on Wayland, so it should be a lot more useful, and support for GDK4 applications has been implemented as well, as the new version of that toolkit has some changes specifically for Wayland. Touchscreen users will also have better support for the virtual keyboard, especially when using GDK applications, which should now more reliably make the keyboard pop up when needed. And finally, there are the first steps toward implementing multi-GPU support in Wayland. So let's hope it will make dual GPU devices more usable, like hybrid Intel AMD devices, or laptops using NVIDIA dedicated graphics and integrated Intel or AMD ones. And that's about it for Plasma 5.21. Of course, this doesn't cover all the smallest changes and bug fixes that happened in this release, but it's a pretty big one nonetheless. The changes in the title bars, the new application menu, it all points out to a more thorough redesign of the whole look and feel of Plasma, which I'm excited about. Wayland is now a way more viable option for people who aren't using Nvidia graphics, as these GPUs are still unsupported for now, and the new system monitor will be a boon for people who need to have an eye on how their devices perform at all times. Plasma 5.21 should release on February the 16th, so three days after this video's release. As always, the most reliable way to get it on release date is using KDE Neon or a rolling release. 
Kubuntu users or users of more stable distributions will have to wait for the next release of their distro to take advantage of it. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And if you really want to help support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.